Welcome to Homica's Garden in Somerset, Southwest UK. It's the height of summer and I'm showing you some bits of the garden that we don't feature a lot in some of the other videos on YouTube. And this is a market garden, so it's a third of an acre. I'm selling a lot of food from here. I employ one person full-time and two or three part-time helpers, mainly for harvesting. Salads, we sell a lot of salad leaves. Twice a week we're picking for them. And we're also doing a lot of other companion planting trials and all sorts of different comparisons here. Like for example, these celeriac this spring were, were struggling a bit. They uh, were suffering aphids and you can see that's the effect of the earlier aphid damage, which thankfully now is they're growing away from. And because of that, the plants were much smaller than I'd expect them to be. They still are. We're going to get a bit of a crop here of celeriac, but I decided to use the space by interplanting with leek, multi-sown leek modules. And that's one lovely aspect of no-dig. Your ground is ready for seeds or plants at any stage, and you can mix plants up. I'm also doing no rotation trials like here. So we have cabbages or brassica plants in the same place now in the seventh year of doing that. So this, this has been brassicas every summer and autumn for the last six years now. This is the seventh year. And likewise, that's leeks in the seventh autumn, summer and autumn of growing leeks. They were preceded by potatoes, which we harvested two weeks ago. And that was the seventh year of potatoes in this area gave 42 kilos of lovely potatoes, pest and disease free. They're now in sacks in the shed. And on the same day, we transplant the leeks, which was sown April, raised as plants, multi-sown and popped in 32 blocks in each bed because there are three strips here. And this is part of a three strip trial, I call it, where the first strip here, we fork the ground to loosen the soil, loosen the inverted commas, and see what effect that has compared to no dig, not loosen, just pure no dig. And both of these strips have the same amount of compost. And so far over six years of doing that, the forked strip has 5% lower, lower yield of vegetables compared to the no dig strip in the middle. And then there's one more strip, strip three, which is also no dig, and that has a different compost, that's cow manure compost. And that's slightly lower yield, or actually quite similar to strip two. And this is ongoing. So all the time we're watching, observing, learning, and yeah, it's fascinating. Interplanting is such a nice thing that you can do in so many unexpected ways. Like here, this was carrots. And we've already had a fantastic crop of carrots from this bed. And in the middle of June, <laughs> we harvest enough space between the carrots to be able to pop in Brussels sprout plants, which are basically interplants. So that's two crops in one year from the one application of compost. Now we're at perennials corner where asparagus, for example, in its ninth year now, we were picking it from April through May and June, stop on roughly the longest day. And then the plants, they've done all that in the last five or six weeks, amazing. And then are photosynthesizing to feed back energy to the roots for next year's harvest of asparagus. And down here, <coughs> this is what you can see there is asparagus stems from last year. And in October, we cut them with a scythe as they start to go yellow, die off, and pile them all up in that pathway up the middle and walk on them a lot. And that squashes down and they rot in and it adds fertility back and people ask well what about asparagus beetle but actually no it's not too much of a problem here i do see a little bit of beetle the weather's quite wet at the moment and that is helping to reduce the numbers other perennials here include sea kale in front of the black currants there the black currant bush is very low maintenance pretty regular there in their ninth year. There's some globe artichoke there. We've had the three big ones. <laughs> it's only one plant actually. And there's secondary crop. And then the rhubarb beyond is mainly for the spring. 
while the raspberries are mainly for the autumn. That's autumn raspberries which are about to start cropping now and I'm always looking for the easiest way to do things, the quickest way and I find autumn raspberries they don't need any supports and they don't need any net here either because the birds by the time these are cropping are going to the hedgerows for blackberries and elderberries which are also fruiting any time now. This is a Johnson Sioux bioreactor. <laughs> Johnson and Sioux from the University of Texas. Uh, it's aerated heat with wood chip. We're, it's something we're trialling so I, I don't want to say too much about it. You can find it on the internet. You'll see some nice videos about work they've done with that. Looking for different ways to make compost. This was another little compost trial using this box and <laughs> it fell apart last week. So we'll have a look at that in another video that we're making about different ways of making compost. And now let's have a look at the main garden. So yeah, this main area is where I made my first beds nine years ago. And my last bed, <laughs> which was last November, I was running out of space and we made a video with Kevin of Epic Gardening in California about creating a new bed on weeds. And this very weedy corner here, a lot of bindweed and brambles and nettles and ivy, uh, that's the bed that resulted. And it's in this weedy corner because I was running out of space. And actually since then I have managed to buy some more land, the nearly an acre beyond that we'll see in a minute. Here I'm doing a range of cropping, including some plants for seed like this spinach there, which is for seed and all being well, that will come to harvest in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and we're using covers quite a bit against insects. This, these were planted here, these broccoli, just two weeks ago, and we haven't weeded since then, actually. So that gives you an idea that weed growth is quite slight. <clears throat> we will take it off soon and pull out the dandelions I'm seeing there. But the mesh cover is really effective at keeping insects off brassicas. And in the summer, I do it systematically. I put a mesh cover on for six weeks, the first six weeks of growth. And you can see the lovely healthy leaves on these savoy cabbage, for example, and some Brussels there and more broccoli and Swedes at the end. The cover will come off in two or three weeks, probably around the middle of August, I find. And then I'll use a spray of Bacillus thuringiensis if there's any caterpillar pressure, but there may not be. And you can find more on that in my video called Pest Prevention. These beans are for dry, <coughs> dry seed. So they're bolotis and we haven't picked them at all and we're not going to until they dry. So there's little beans swelling inside there. And that's probably going to be early October. I found bolotis quite easy. They whole lot dry in one go and we then pick them all on a dry day, shell them out. And that's food for winter as well as seed for next year. And I'm growing them in teepees. <clears throat> These are hazel stick teepees. I find that acts better in the wind, a prevailing wind from there, uh, because it's not like a wall. It's not a line. There's wind can go through. And so <laughs> touch wood, they don't blow over. I love growing flowers here. So you can see the great sunflowers, dahlias, marigolds, and that's for insects and for our enjoyment as well. I just love having flowers among the vegetables. They look so nice. It just feels right really. And it's, it's a nice chance to play with color a bit like <clears throat> zinnias, you know, just so good in these months of high summer. And the snapdragons over there, the antirhinum, that lovely dark red variety. Here we're at the dig, no dig comparison beds. So this one I dig once a year, every December, incorporate the compost. That one simply no dig, same amount of compost on top. Ongoing, always fascinating. So far this year, 37 kilos of harvest there, 43 kilos of harvest there. Generally no dig edges it for less work. One thing we did differently this year was take off the sides. So last December, the they were oak actually, the sides, the hardwood, so they lasted better than if they were softwood, obviously. But yeah, we removed them and uh, it's interesting now, you know, they're, they're more high mounds, if you like, rather than raised beds. And generally speaking, I, I, I don't use wooden sides. I find that it's not, they're not needed. I was doing it here because it marks out the trial in a clearing, precise way. 
and I've got a string along there just to mark the side at the moment uh, keep keep the beds in the place everything you see here is a second planting so <clears throat> we've, we've we're barely halfway through the year in terms of cropping and the harvest we've had are all finished and as soon as they do finish like potatoes here for example we planted the soy cabbage and endive and beetroot and leeks follow peas and so on uh, it's fascinating always having these comparisons to make Everything we've seen so far in this garden, except for carrots, parsnips, garlic and potatoes, starts life here. So this is plant raising, mostly in, in module trays for popping out quite young, uh, straight from the modules, not potted on. And that means that all the plant raising can happen in quite a small area. This is for well, you see what you've seen, you know, it's just a lot of plants because we're raising plants all through the year. There's quite a lot of autumn salads now and some kohlrabi, for example. And that means that most of the space in the greenhouse is free for growing vegetables. And in the winter, we have salads in here. In the summer, these warmth loving plants, including aubergines, <laughs> which sadly this year I've had been stricken by red spider mite and totally out of the blue. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, th I think next year I'll need to put in, um, I'll buy a predator, a phytosilus that you can put in at planting time, which will eat the red spider. Uh, because otherwise it's very, well, you can see the result. I've lost all my plants there. And it's now um, starting to get into this loofah plant. Uh, the leaf is, you can see that yellowing. You don't ever see a red spider. Well, you very seldom, unless your eyesight's really good. Um, but what you see then, little bit of cobweb around the stem when they're really bad and it's just starting to get into those melons a bit so I'm hoping they'll finish cropping before the red spider gets too bad in there and what I find though in here is the extra warmth of the greenhouse is really good for plants like melons compared to the polytunnel and like the tomatoes here you can see that's that's no dig no feeding it's just compost mulch um, they're doing really well they at least don't get a spider mite and we can see now going into the polytunnel the comparison of growth with the same plants in slightly cooler conditions under plastic. So the polytunnel is quite a bit bigger area than the greenhouse and it costs about one third the price so it's really good value polytunnels and you can see the lovely growth in here. We have cherry tomatoes on one side beef tomatoes on the other. I find I like the cherries for their earlier cropping, particularly the sun gold there. Uh, beef tomato, we've only just started picking the first ones in late July. And we're being very careful now not to water the leaves, keep the leaves dry. That reduces chance of late blight. Here the compost goes down in middle of May and that is good soil food for the whole year, including the winter crops, which is this base is full of salad all through the winter months of the year. And we're alternating half and half in the summer with tomatoes one and cucumbers the other. Next year it'll be the other way around. Cucumbers, I take off the lower leaves, rather like the tomatoes even more actually. <laughs> I do a bit more every year. Um, this, this is the working leaf up here. And also I thin out every second fruit. And that means like, for example, you can see it here, there's cucumber there, there's a gap, a cucumber gap where I've taken it out cucumber and a gap and so on and that lessens the strain on the plants so that they crop more evenly and you don't have a feast and famine where they crop a lot and then stop for a while and then because I've removed space here like for the lower leaves <laughs> I can bring this leader down and it will carry on growing right down to the floor actually it's just one way of doing it where you loop it over the wire and then carry on downwards I'm watering in here not too often so twice a week the surface dries out in between. Uh, the basil takes quite a lot of water. That, that's a very leafy plant, so we're using that in the salads. There's some Genovese and some lemon basil there. And then something I've noticed this year is the wood chip. Uh, well, <laughs> we're putting bits of wood in the compost or wood prunings, and it, it's making for quite a woody surface. So this is compost that went on in May, and. I think these bits of wood are just a bit more numerous than I'd like. They're encouraging wood lice and that's why there's gaps in the row of marigold. Normally that would be full and I noticed wood lice eating the leaves of the new plants when they went in in May this year. That's something to watch out for. 
generally, you know, wood is great as a surface mulch on paths, but I wouldn't have, don't want too much on beds. And the last bit of homeworkers old garden that we're coming to now is the herb garden here, <coughs> which has only been in the ground for a few months. These were planted in the middle of March, mostly plants from Jekamuk Vicar. We made a video with her, with her here uh, just over a month ago. You can see that on the channel. And it's been fun, you know, lovely flowering plants. They're really pretty. The insects like them as well as giving us nice food to eat. And now we're coming to the last bit of this tour, which is the new area of homemakers expanding. This field, when I bought it in January, I didn't have a very clear idea what I was gonna do with it. It was all quite spontaneous and unforeseen. And I did know that there was probably quite a lot of bindweed in this corner. <laughs> and that's been a feature of what we've been dealing with in terms of growing vegetables for the first part of the year, because it's only four or five months since it was weedy pasture. And using no dig methods, we've put cardboard compost on top and then some black polythene as well because you can see how the black polythene there is really making quite a difference by keeping light off the bindweed that's trying to grow that's why the leaves are all yellow light deprivation and that weakens the parent root of the bindweed at the same time as one is growing plants here we're also doing a little trial using some wool that I was given sheep wool and that can provide quite a bit of goodness as it breaks down into the ground. We'll see what difference it makes. And then over there, we're, we're doing quite a few other things under polythene, like the potatoes we're harvesting at the moment. And you can see again, lots of bindweed. But the potatoes pull out really easily. They're, they're planted not deep, just the depth of a trowel through a slit in the polythene. And going this way, we're not using any polythene or plastic, it's just hand weeding, including in the polytunnel. Uh, there's one little bit of plastic, but it's mainly open ground. And this is a new tunnel which arrived only two and a half months ago, May, June, July. Yeah, really not long ago. And as soon as it was here, we spread some more compost and put plants in. And the compost mainly that we've used here is purchase compost because I didn't didn't have enough homemade to make a lot of new beds and we'll see the heaps in a minute going forward so uh, we've used a few tons to make these beds but it's not it's not that deep actually and quite a bit of what's growing here is already second planting so for example there was broccoli before the celery there nice crop of broccoli I'm impressed actually because it's not a huge amount of not the highest quality compost, it's green waste compost. This was spinach before these brassicas. So with the no dig, the, the, the pasture weeds have all died except for the bindweed and the plants are now rooting into the soil which has been mulched of its weeds. So the soil is open now to vegetable roots. If you, when you put cardboard down, it decomposes under any compost within three months pretty much all gone. So your roots then go down, your plant roots, at the same time as any remaining weeds come up. These are sources of fertility that I've had delivered, like wood chip, cow manure, green waste compost. And all of this is a stack of goodness, which will be spreading over the next 18 months or so. Uh, it's good to buy compost before you need it if you can because uh, then there's time for it to finish ripening uh, before because it's often sold before it's really ready to be used here again we're using mesh this area had a lot of rabbits and at the moment we're not seeing many and i'm not too clear what's behind that but we do notice the rabbit problems do diminish every summer they're bad in the spring and um, that's what some of the covers have been about, is to keep the rabbits off, but this is now insects as well. And this is another stretch of black plastic, which is growing these squash. And these are winter squash, interplanted with a few sweet corn. 
and they're a variety called Crown Prince which I really like because it superb flavour and the fruits develop a very hard skin which means they store exceptionally well over th all through the winter so this is winter food here and if your winter squash are starting to lose quality in the leaf don't worry about that that's normal for this time of year they they start to go over a bit now as the fruits start to ripen and they they look their best in early July <laughs> slightly downhill now and behind me there are more things going to happen like there's going to be a pond there my son Jack is going to come and dig that when it's wetter so he can puddle the clay there's beehives arrived in the very far corner we can't quite see them because of the height of the meadow here we're leaving this I'm leaving this as a just grassy meadow wildflowers there's usually quite a few moths and insects there uh, the ground's not needed at the moment I've probably won't crop vegetables here and you can see there's a shed arriving which we'll use for storage and other things and yeah I hope you've enjoyed having a look around here this this area that we call the new area we feature in videos every couple of months uh, that you can catch up and if you want to find out more about the no dig growing I've been describing check out my website there's updates every two or three weeks and also my online courses which you can see there and books in the website shop. Mm -hmm.